friends. I'm Miss Sarah, and this is our Artist of the Month virtual story time. Our artist this month was a very famous folk sculptor who developed an 18-acre sculpture garden in India that is now one of the most famous tourist attractions there. His name? Nek Chand. The story we'll be reading is called The Secret Kingdom, Nek Chand, A Changing India and a Hidden World of Art. It is words by Barb Rosenstock and pictures by Claire A. Nivola. It's read of permission of Candlewick Press. On the continent of Asia, near the mighty Himalayas, in the Punjab region of long ago, sat the tiny village of Berian Kalan, the place Nek Chan Saini called home. Do you see the mountains? What else do you notice about the town? There's a river. There are children playing. It looks like a pretty good place. Let's see what happens. In the village, Neck played and planted, laughed and listened as the ancient stories circled with the seasons beginning to end and back again. In blistering summer fields, his father told of wise kings while they raised scarecrows dressed in torn kurtas and dented bucket hats. On frosty winter nights, his mother told of graceful goddesses while snuggling him in thick rajai made from scraps of fabric. During the monsoon rains, his sisters told of magical geese while collecting sticks for toy rafts. And at harvest, his brothers told of fierce jackals and chattering monkeys while picking up each fallen kernel of kanak, wasting nothing. During the festivals of Diwali and Lori, traveling minstrels told of hidden temples and secret jungles. Season by season, next head filled with stories until it overflowed. I wonder what he'll do with all those stories. What would you do? Maybe start writing your own? That's a great idea. Let's turn the page and see. Then on the banks of the village stream, Neck built a world of his own. He dug silk palaces and spilled waterfalls, molded clay goddesses and planted stick kings. He found rocks shaped like jackals, monkeys, and geese and made them pounce, scamper, or fly. What's he building? On the bank of the river. Yeah, there's a big palace or castle and he built a little inlet. Wow. That's a really cool sculpture. At midday, his mouth watering for toasted chapatis, Nek walked past plowmen singing behind oxen and bangled women swaying to balance water jugs, all following the curving paths home. He traveled from stream to home, home to school, and back again. Year after year, he watched babies arrive and old ones pass on. Nek became a farmer, part of the ancient cycle of changing seasons and shared stories, until the men with guns came. The Punjab split into two countries, Pakistan and India. People of all faiths had lived together for ages, but now next village was in the Muslim country of Pakistan and his Hindu family no longer belonged. The Saini family fled at night, walking for 24 days across the new border into India. Nek carried only village stories in his broken heart. That's awful. He had to leave his home to go to a new place. I wonder what he'll do there. In the crowded towns, no one needed another poor farmer. So Nek shoveled gravel to build roads. He found work as a government road inspector and moved to India's first modern city, Chandigarh. 26 villages were bulldozed flat to build Chandigarh, a sharp-edged city of colorless concrete. 
Nothing in this modern place tugged at next village heart. Where were the curving paths and flowing streams? Where were the singing men, the swaying women? Where were the stories? Neck dreamed of a place to belong. At the city's northern edge, he found acres of jungle scrubland owned by the government. Though no building was permitted, Neck began settling this hidden wilderness. Battling clouds of mosquitoes and slivering cobras, he cut a half acre of dense vegetation and built a mud hut. He set up a wall of official looking oil drums to say, keep out. Hmm, what's he going to do in the jungle? Do you have a guess? Oh, maybe he'll do something with his stories here. Let's keep reading. Before work, Neck roamed the roadsides, picking up the broken pieces of village life under the modern city. He gathered chip sinks, cracked water pots, and broken glass bangles in red, blue, and green. On his bicycle, he collected boulders from faraway riverbeds, some shaped like the people and animals he missed most. After work, he carried these treasures into the wilderness. Until seven years later, the time came to build the secret kingdom. Filling hundreds of used burlap bags of concrete, Neck stacked boulder terraces, mixed cement in dented metal bowls, and colored it with brick dust. He traveled on the wet paste and pressed in porcelain shards chipped from old sinks and toilets, wasting nothing. He paved curving paths, carved niched walls, and strung pebble-covered wire to make transparent screens. Fractured tiles or electric sockets formed archways bowing to one courtyard, then another, all connected like the village he remembered. Next, saved half-dead plants from the city dump. He filled rusty barrels with water, rolled them in secret to his land, and brought the plants back to life. The secret kingdom filled with flaming bougainvillea, blushing oleander, sweet mango, and tangled papal trees. He made skeletons from twisted bikes and rusty pipes, covering their frames in concrete etched with the faces of goddesses and queens. Rows of bangles made rainbows of singing men, swaying women and laughing children. He sculpted packs of jackals, troops of monkeys and flocks of geese. Beginning to end and back again, Neck found each group a place to belong until he belonged too, king of a hidden land of stories. Neck built his kingdom over 12 acres and kept it secret for 15 years. One day, a government crew clearing jungle underbrush stumbled onto Neck's land. They reported his illegal building to the police. Everyone in Chandigarh learned his secret. Officials were outraged. Neck Chansaini should lose his job. His kingdom would be destroyed. Oh no! because he built his sculptures on land that didn't belong to him. It's going to get destroyed. I hope he can save it somehow. Who do you see in the picture? You're right, there are lots of different people until the people of Chandigarh came. Curious, they entered this magical world created by a humble road inspector. By the hundreds, city people roamed sculptured walkways, ducked through arches, laughed and told village stories, beginning to end and back again. The people saved the secret kingdom. They gave money and tools. They collected scrap to recycle. They convinced officials to honor Nekchand as an artist and let him stay in the place he belonged. Nekchand built and built until he created, oh my, look at the photos. This is amazing. As long as he lived, Neck never stopped building. Year after year, officials plot to destroy the kingdom for new parking lots or roads. Season after season, people in India and all over the world resist. For Neck Chan's secret kingdom tells the stories all people need to hear. Stories of coming home. And that's the end. 
there's a biographical note. Let's read it, see what it says. Nek Chand is a famous folk artist. Between three and 4,000 people a day visit his rock garden of Chandakar, a wonderland built from recycled materials. The rock garden is the largest visionary art environment in the world, now 25 acres of art set on a 40 acre site. Nek Chan Saini was born in 1924, about 25 miles north of the city of Lahore, then a part of British colonial India and now Pakistan. After fleeing as a refugee during the partition of India in 1947, Nek Chan settled in Chandigarh in 1951. He married and had two children. Chandigarh was India's only planned city, designed in the early 1950s by the French architect Le Corbusier, a pioneer of modern architecture. Its European style poured concrete buildings were created to show off an independent modern India. However, these buildings never fit well into the country's landscape or its culture. Nek Chand began collecting river rocks in 1958, gathering castoffs and waste from the city until 1965, when he started work on his secret kingdom as a private retreat. As the years passed, only his wife and a few close friends knew of his project. He built in his spare time until 1973, when a government crew found his site. Though many in Chandigarh's government wanted to destroy Chan's illegal creation, a few others insisted on its protection. Dr. M. S. Randala, a biologist and anthropologist who is chief commissioner and chairman of the Landscape Committee in Chandigarh, recognized the value of Chan's artwork, supported the collection, and advocated for its protection. In 1976, the city promoted Nek Chand to director of the official rock garden in Chandigarh, which then opened to the public. He continued to build an extensively landscaped second phase of his kingdom, constructing waterfalls, bridges, and streams, which was completed in 1983. Chand also started a program for citizens and industries in Chandigarh to recycle household and industrial waste to be used in his art. Though Nek Chand was awarded India's Padma Shri, naming him a national treasure in 1984, some officials still objected to his recycled artwork and threatened its destruction. In 1990, hundreds of demonstrators, including many children, formed a human chain to stop bulldozers from destroying the site. In 1996, while Nek Chand visited the United States to speak at art museums and galleries, officials stopped funding and the site was vandalized. City agreements to protect the site are not always honored, and as a result, the rock garden is deteriorating. The Nek Chand Foundation was formed in 1997 by a group of artists, conservators, and the public to support Nek Chand's work and awareness of the rock garden. Chand's artwork has been exhibited in Europe, the United States, and Asia. It can be found in the Collection de la Brue in Switzerland, the Collectie de Stadshof in Belgium, and in the U.S. at the American Folk Art Museum, the American Visionary Art Museum, the Museum of International Folk Art, and the John Michael Kohler Art Center, which owns the largest collection outside Chandigarh. Until his death in 2015 at age 90, Nek Chan spent each day at home in the rock garden, meeting with visitors, creating new plans, and supervising the continued construction of his kingdom. And he's another great example of what you can accomplish if you never stop dreaming. You'll be able to make your own DIY clay sculptures next week if you watch Ms. Erin's how-to video or stop by the library for your own kit. Next Saturday, May 22nd, is also the first Sharpsburg Art Adventure, a borough-wide art walk which the library is proud to be taking part in. You can stop by the library next Saturday, May 22nd from 12 to 2 to see a pop-up exhibit of local artist Melissa Ty's watercolors, as well as our permanent art collection. Keep dreaming, stay safe and healthy, until next month.